you know, I, I grew up in, in the border, so, uh, and I, you know, I'm really interested in, you know, in that culture. Uh, it's a very, very unique place. Uh, it's neither one country or the other. I think it's, it's, it's its own, uh, it has its own culture, its own identity. You know, I met people from Mexico and I'll tell them that I was born in Reynosa, which is a border town. And they'll tell me, because they're from, let's say, from the inside of Mexico, like uh, uh, Mexico City or from Michoacan. And I'll tell them I'm from I'm from Mexico and I'm from Reynosa, and they'll say, "Well, that's not really Mexico anymore. You know, that's uh, that's the U.S." And I've met people outside of Texas, and I tell them, well, you know, they're also from Texas." And I'll tell them, "Well, I'm from Texas," and they'll ask, "Well, what part of Texas are you from?" Like, "Well, I'm from you know from uh, McAllen. I'm from uh, from Edinburgh," and they'll say, "Well, that's not Texas anymore. That is that's Mexico." And so it, it I, you know, those two. You know, uh, responses I think prove that it, in a way, it is its own uh, its own culture. And you know, growing up in, in Reynosa, I thought you know hamburgers and hot dogs were Mexican street food. You know, but they're you know, it it, it shows the influence that one country has on the other when because of the proximity you know to the border. Academia and, and you know my my education also has a, you know played a, a big role in uh, in the artwork that I do. Uh, and you know, studying you know art history, starting you know studying painting. I can't help but always uh, see art history through uh, through the lens of my border experience. One of the artists that I really you know admire is uh, you know Caravaggio, and you know he's a you could say he's the one that started you know the Baroque art movement in the in the 1600s, and you know his works you know characterized by you know very dramatic lighting. And the scenes are also very dramatic. You know, in the past, you know, few years, you know, as as the, there was violence happening in Mexico, and I started looking at, you know, journalism sources and imagery uh, for the journalism coming out of Mexico, and also videos of executions and things like that. I couldn't help but see those through the through the lens of art history, and seeing the similarity of those torture scenes and executions. And seeing the, the the similarity with the compositions of paintings by by Caravaggio, such as you know, such as the uh, like the beheading of John the Baptist or the head of uh, the head of, of David with the head of Goliath, you know, there were direct uh, connections to uh, to execution videos. A musical uh, language that's come out of the border is the corrido, with you know, again referring back to my growing up in the border. And like many people from the border, you grew up, li you know, grew up listening to that, to those, to those songs. One thing that always, you know, struck me a as a child is, uh, you know, it had this very, you know, it had, the songs themselves had a lot of implied action, a lot of drama to them. You know, before there was a news media, it was the way that news would spread throughout, you know, the communities, uh, and and so, you know. That idea of you know storytelling and my interest also in uh, narrative painting you know kind of came together, uh, but the, the 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 original corrido or what is more known more traditional as a corrido is the the corridos that deal with the Mexican Revolution you know it just they told the stories of uh, you know the revolutionary heroes, uh, but uh, you know that that was the Mexican Revolution was it's already over a hundred years old. Now the people that are the patrons for for the musicians uh, are the the uh, the leaders of cartels. You know, people that have become very powerful through the through the drug war, and so they pay musicians to write you know songs praising them and praising their exploits and praising how brave they are, and that that has that become the what is now referred to as, as narco corrido. Uh, well, the corrido, you know, they tell they tell a story about violence, and they and but the musicians make it very pleasant to listen to. You know, I found that connection with Caravaggio. You know, making gruesome images that were beautiful. You know, they were pleasant to look at. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm primarily a painter. I had never done uh, this type of printmaking. Uh, I had done uh, some etching and some uh, lithography. Uh, I had read a little bit about 
uh, serigraphy, but I was not, I had no experience in it whatsoever. So one thing that really was surprising was the amount of work. It's very, it's, there's a, or maybe I, I think also I, I tend, I think I was a little too ambitious with the amount of color that I wanted to put on there. I did 10 color separations, so I had to make 10 drawings. You know, they're very skilled at what they do, and they were, you know, their, uh, you know, their feedback and their input, I think, was really, really valuable. I, I could have, I don't think I, there's no way I could have ever done this on, you know, on my own. I've got this exhibition called uh, Baroque on the Border that I've had a chance to show, you know, throughout Texas. And so in September of this year, I'll be showing it at the, uh, in San Antonio, at the Southwest School of Art. Uh, but I can, you know, continue to paint, you know, uh, adding to that, to that body of work, you know, images of, dramatic images of the border, you know, uh, currently working on a large, uh, border crossing. It's a family that are crossing from El Paso, from Juarez to El Paso. Those are what, what's in the, in the future, in the immediate future for me as, a, as an artist.